The second happy time, also known among German submarine commanders as the American shooting season was the informal name for a phase in the Battle of the Atlantic during which Axis submarines attacked merchant shipping and Allied naval vessels along the east coast of North America. The first, happy time, was in 1940-41 in the North Atlantic and North Sea. Adolf Hitler and Benito Mussolini declared war on the United States on the 11th of December 1941 so their navies could begin the second happy time. The second happy time lasted from January 1942 to about August of that year and involved several German naval operations including Operation Paukenschlag or Operation Drumbeat and Operation Newland. German submariners named it the Happy Time or the Golden Time as defense measures were weak and disorganized, and the U-boats were able to inflict massive damage with little risk. During this period, Axis submarines sank 609 ships totaling 3.1 million tons and the loss of thousands of lives, mainly those of merchant mariners, against a loss of only 22 U-boats. Although less than losses during the 1917 campaign of the First World War, it was roughly one quarter of all shipping sunk by U-boats during the entire Second World War. Historian Michael Gannon called it, America's Second Pearl Harbor and placed the blame for the nation's failure to respond quickly to the attacks on the inaction of Admiral Ernest J. King, commander-in-chief of the U.S. fleet. Others however have pointed out that the belated institution of a convoy system was at least in substantial part due to a severe shortage of suitable escort vessels, without which convoys were seen as actually more vulnerable than lone ships. Campaign Background Upon Germany's declaration of war on the United States on the 11th of December 1941 just after the attack on Pearl Harbor, the U.S. was, on paper at least, in a fortunate position. Where the other combatants on the Allied side had already lost thousands of trained sailors and airmen, and were experiencing shortages of ships and aircraft, the U.S. was at full strength save for its recent losses at Pearl Harbor. The U.S. had the opportunity to learn about modern naval warfare by observing the conflicts in the North Sea and the Mediterranean, and through a close relationship with the United Kingdom. The U.S. Navy had already gained significant experience in countering U-boats in the Atlantic, particularly from April 1941 when President Franklin D. Roosevelt extended the Pan American Security Zone east almost as far as Iceland. The United States had massive manufacturing capacity, including certainly the largest and possibly the most advanced electrical engineering industry in the world. Finally, the U.S. had a favorable geographical position from a defensive point of view. The Port of New York, for example, was 3,000 miles to the west of the U-boat bases in Brittany. U-boat commander Vizedmiral Carl Donitz saw the entry of the U.S. into the war as a golden opportunity to strike heavy blows in the Tonnage War and Hitler ordered an assault on America on 12 December 1941. The standard Type 7 U-boat had insufficient range to patrol off the coast of North America, the only suitable weapons he had on hand were the larger Type 9 boats. These were less maneuverable and slower to submerge, making them much more vulnerable than the Type 7s. They were also fewer in number. Topic. Opening moves Immediately after war was declared on the United States, Donitz began to implement Operation Paukenschlag often translated as drumbeat or drumroll and literally as timpani beat. Only six of the 20 operational Type 9 boats were available, and one of those six encountered mechanical trouble. This left just five long-range submarines for the opening moves of the campaign, loaded with the maximum possible amounts of fuel, food and ammunition. The first of the five Type 9s left Lorient in France on 18 December 1941, the others following over the next few days. Each carried sealed orders to be opened after passing 20 degrees west, and directing them to different parts of the North American coast. 
No charts or sailing directions were available. Captain Lieutenant Reinhard Hardigan of U-123, for example, was provided with two tourist guides to New York, one of which contained a fold-out map of the harbor. Each U-boat made routine signals on exiting the Bay of Biscay, which were picked up by the British Y service and plotted in Roger Wynne's London submarine tracking room, which were then able to follow the progress of the Type 9s across the Atlantic and cable an early warning to the Royal Canadian Navy. Working on the slimmest of evidence, Wynne correctly deduced the target area and passed a detailed warning to Admiral Ernest J. King, the commander-in-chief of the U.S. fleet, of a heavy concentration of U-boats off the North American seaboard, including the five boats already on station and further groups that were in transit, 21 U-boats in all. Rear Admiral Edwin T. Layton of the U.S. Combined Operations and Intelligence Center then informed the responsible area commanders, but little or nothing else was done. The primary target area was the Eastern Sea Frontier, commanded by Rear Admiral Adolphus Andrews and covering the area from Maine to North Carolina. Andrews had practically no modern forces to work with. On the water, he commanded seven Coast Guard cutters, four converted yachts, three 1919 vintage patrol boats, two gunboats dating back to 1905, and four wooden submarine chasers. About 100 aircraft were available, but these were short range models only suitable for training. As a consequence of the traditionally antagonistic relationship between the U.S. Navy and the Army Air Forces, all larger aircraft remained under USAAF control, and in any case the USAAF was neither trained nor equipped for anti-submarine work. <laughs> <laughs> Allied response British experience in the first two years of World War II, which included the massive losses incurred to their shipping during the first happy time, confirmed that ships sailing in convoy—with or without escort—were far safer than ships sailing alone. The British recommended that merchant ships should avoid obvious standard routings wherever possible, navigational markers, lighthouses, and other aids to the enemy should be removed, and a strict coastal blackout be enforced. In addition, any available air and sea forces should perform daylight patrols to restrict the U-boat's flexibility. For several months, none of the recommendations were followed. Coastal shipping continued to sail along marked routes and burn normal navigation lights. Boardwalk communities ashore were only requested to consider turning their illuminations off on 18 December 1941, but not in the cities, they did not want to offend the tourism, recreation and business sectors. On 12 January 1942, Admiral Andrews was warned that three or four U-boats were about to commence operations against coastal shipping in fact there were three, but he refused to institute a convoy system on the grounds that this would only provide the U-boats with more targets. Despite the urgent need for action, little was done to try to combat the U-boats. The USN was desperately short of specialized anti-submarine vessels. President Roosevelt's 1941 decision to loan. Fifty obsolete World War I-era destroyers to Britain in exchange for foreign bases, was largely irrelevant. These destroyers had a large turning circle that made them ineffective for anti-submarine work, however, their firepower would have been a significant defense against surface attack, which was the major threat in the early part of World War II. The massive new naval construction program had prioritized other types of ships. While freighters and tankers were being sunk in coastal waters, the destroyers that were available remained inactive in port. At least 25 Atlantic Convoy Escort Command destroyers had been recalled to the U.S. East Coast at the time of the first attacks, including seven at anchor in New York Harbor. When U-123 sank the 9,500-ton Norwegian tanker Nornis within sight of Long Island in the early hours of 14 January, no warships were dispatched to investigate, allowing the U-123 to sink the 6,700-ton British tanker Coimbra off Sandy Hook on the following night before proceeding south toward Towards New Jersey. By this time there were 13 destroyers idle in New York Harbor, yet none were employed to deal with the immediate threat, and over the following nights U-123 was presented with a succession of easy targets, most of them burning navigation lamps. At times, U-123 was operating in coastal waters that were so shallow that they barely allowed it to conceal itself, let alone evade a depth charge attack. Operation Drumbeat 
For the five Type 9 boats in the first wave of attack, known as Operation Drumbeat, it was a bonanza. They cruised along the coast, safely submerged through the day, and surfacing at night to pick off merchant vessels outlined against the lights of the cities. Reinhard Hardigan in U-123 sank seven ships totaling 46,744 tons before he ran out of torpedoes and returned to base. Ernst Kals in U-130 sank six ships of 36,988 tons. Robert Richard Zapp in U-66 sank five ships of 33,456 tons. Heinrich Bleikrott in U-109 sank four ships of 27,651 tons, and Ulrich Fokers on his first patrol in U-125 sank one 6,666-ton vessel, the West Ivis. He was criticized by Donitz for his poor performance, although he would later win the Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross. When the first wave of U-boats returned to port through the early part of February, Donitz wrote that each commander had such an abundance of opportunities for attack that he could not by any means utilize them all. There were times when there were up to ten ships in sight, sailing with all lights burning on peacetime courses. A significant flaw in U.S. pre war planning was the failure to provide ships suitable for convoy escort work. Escort vessels travel at relatively slow speeds, carry a large number of depth charges, must be highly maneuverable, and must stay on station for long periods. The fleet destroyers equipped for high speed and offensive action that were available were not the ideal design for this type of escort work. When the war started, the U.S. had no equivalent of the more effective British Black Swan class sloops or the River class frigate in their inventory. This blunder was highly surprising since the American Navy USN had previously been involved in anti-submarine work in the Atlantic see USS Reuben James and at the time was marginally aggravated by the loss of the destroyers. Loaned to Britain through Lend-Lease, however, these vessels would have been largely obsolete for anti-submarine purposes due to their counterattack vulnerability and inherent inability to maneuver as required to combat submarines. The U.S. also lacked both aircraft suitable for anti-submarine patrol and any aircrew trained to use them at that time. Offers of civilian ships and aircraft to act as the Navy's eyes were repeatedly turned down, only to be accepted later when the situation was clearly critical and the Admiral's claims to the contrary had become discredited. <laughs> Operation Newland Meanwhile, the second wave of Type 9 U-boats had arrived in North American waters, and the third wave Operation Newland had reached its patrol area off the oil ports of the Caribbean. With such easy pickings available and all Type 9 U-boats already committed, Donitz began sending shorter-range Type 7 U-boats to the U.S. East Coast as well. This required extraordinary measures, cramming every conceivable space with provisions, some even filling the fresh water tanks with diesel oil, and crossing the Atlantic at very low speed on a single engine to conserve fuel. In the United States there was still no concerted response to the attacks. Overall responsibility rested with Admiral King, but he was preoccupied with the Japanese onslaught in the Pacific. Admiral Andrews' North Atlantic coastal frontier was expanded to take in South Carolina and renamed the Eastern Sea Frontier, but most of the ships and aircraft needed remained under the command of Admiral Royal E. Ingersoll, Commander-in-Chief, Atlantic Fleet, who was often at sea and unavailable to make decisions. Roger Wynne's detailed weekly U-boat situation reports from the submarine tracking room in London were available but ignored. U.S. <laughs> propaganda Popular alarm at the sinkings was dealt with by a combination of secrecy and misleading propaganda. The U.S. Navy confidently announced that many of the U-boats would never enjoy the return portion of their voyage," but that unfortunately, details of the sunken U-boats could not be made public lest the information aid the enemy. All citizens who had witnessed the sinking of a U-boat were asked to help keep the secret safe. <laughs> <laughs> Chronology of attacks 
The 14th of January, Panamanian tanker Nornis sunk by U-123 at 40.44 degrees north, 70.908 degrees west, 40.44 minus 70.908. Nornis sunk by U-123. The 18th of January, U.S. tanker Allen Jackson sunk by U-66 at 35.95 degrees north, 74.33 degrees west, 35.95 minus 74.33. 23 of 35 crewmen perished. The 18th of January, U.S. tanker Malay damaged by U-123 at 35.42 degrees north, 75.38 degrees west, 35.42 minus 75.38. Five crewmen perished. The 19th of January, U.S. steamship City of Atlanta sunk by U-123 at 35.7 degrees north, 75.35 degrees west, 35.7 minus 75.35. 43 of 46 crewmen perished. The 19th of January, Canadian steamship Lady Hawkins sunk by U-66 at 35.0 degrees north, 72.5 degrees west, 35.0 minus 72.5. The 22nd of January, U.S. freighter Norvana sunk by U-123 south of Cape Hatteras. No survivors. The 23rd of January, U.S. Collier Venor sunk by U-66 at 35.83 degrees north, 75.33 degrees west, 35.83 minus 75.33. 17 of 41 crewmen perished. The 25th of January, U.S. tanker Olney damaged by U-125 at 37.92 degrees north, 74.93 degrees west, 37.92 minus 74.93. The 26th of January, U.S. freighter West Ibis sunk by U-125. All 45 crewmen perished. The 27th of January, U.S. tanker Francis E. Powell sunk by U-130 at 37.75 degrees north, 74.88 degrees west, 37.75 minus 74.88. Four of 32 crewmen perished. The 27th of January, U.S. tanker Halo damaged by U-130 at 35.55 degrees north, 75.33 degrees west, 35.55 minus 75.33. The 30th of January, U.S. tanker Rochester sunk by U-106 at 37.17 degrees north, 73.97 degrees west, 37.17 minus 73.97. Three of 32 crewmen perished. The 31st of January, U.S. San Arcadio sunk by U-107 at 38.17 degrees north, 63.83 degrees west, 38.17 minus 63.83. The 31st of January, U.S. Tacoma Star sunk by U-109 at 37.55 degrees north, 69.35 degrees west, 37.55 minus 69.35. The 2nd of February, U.S. tanker W.L. Steed sunk by U-103 at 38.42 degrees north, 72.72 degrees west, 38.42 minus 72.72. 34 of 38 crewmen perished. The 3rd of February, Panamanian freighter San Gil sunk by U-103 at 38.08 degrees north, 74.67 degrees west, 38.08 minus 74.67. Two of 40 crewmen perished. The 4th of February, U.S. tanker India Aero sunk by U-103 at 38.8 degrees north 73.67 degrees west, 38.8, minus 73.67, 26 of 38 crewmen perished. The 5th of February, U.S.'s tanker China Aero sunk by U-103 at 38.73 degrees north 73.30 degrees west, 38.73, minus 73.30. The 6th of February, U.S. freighter Major Wheeler sunk by U-107. All 35 crewmen perished. The 8th of February, British freighter Ocean Venture sunk by U-108 at 37.08 degrees north, 74.75 degrees west, 37.08 minus 74.75. 
The 10th of February, Canadian tanker Victolite sunk by U-564 at 36.2 degrees north, 67.23 degrees west, 36.2 minus 67.23. The 15th of February, Brazilian steamship Barquet sunk by U-432 at 36.58 degrees north, 75.33 degrees west, 36.58 minus 75.33. The 18th of February, Brazilian tanker Olinda sunk by U-432 at 37.5 degrees north, 75.0 degrees west, 37.5 minus 75.0. The 19th of February, U.S. tanker Pan Massachusetts sunk by U-128 at 28.45 degrees north, 80.13 degrees west, 28.45 minus 80.13. 20 of 38 crewmen perished. The 20th of February, U.S. freighter Azalea City sunk by U-432 at 38.0 degrees north, 73.0 degrees west, 38.0 minus 73.0. All 38 crewmen perished. The 21st of February, U.S. tanker Republic sunk by U-504 at 27.08 degrees north, 80.25 degrees west, 27.08 minus 80.25. Five of 29 crewmen perished. The 22nd of February, U.S. tanker Cities Service Empire sunk by U-128 at 28.0 degrees north, 80.27 degrees west, 28.0 minus 80.27. 14 of 50 crewmen perished. The 22nd of February, U.S. tanker W.D. Anderson sunk by U-504 at 27.15 degrees north 79.93 degrees west, 27.15, minus 79.93 35 of 36 crewmen perished. The 26th of February, U.S. bulk carrier Maror sunk by U-432 at 35.55 degrees north 74.97 degrees west, 35.55, minus 74.97. The 26th of February, U.S. tanker R.P. Resort sunk by U-578 at 39.78 degrees north, 73.43 degrees west, 39.78 minus 73.43. 47 of 49 crewmen perished. The 28th of February, U.S. destroyer Jacob Jones sunk by U-578 at 38.70 degrees north, 74.65 degrees west, 38.70 minus 74.65. The 7th of March, U.S. freighter Barbara sunk by U-126 at 20.00 degrees north, 73.93 degrees west, 20.00 minus 73.93. The 7th of March, U.S. freighter Cardonia sunk by U-126 at 19.88 degrees north 73.45 degrees west, 19.88, minus 73.45. The 7th of March, Brazilian steamship Arbabaton sunk by U-155 at 35.25 degrees north 73.92 degrees west, 35.25, minus 73.92. The 9th of March, Brazilian steamship Cairo sunk by U-94 at 39.16 degrees north 72.03 degrees west, 39.16, minus 72.03. The 10th of March, U.S. tanker Gulf Trade sunk by U-588 at 39.84 degrees north 73.87 degrees west, 39.84, minus 73.87. The 11th of March, U.S. freighter Texan sunk by U-126 at 21.53 degrees north 76.4 degrees west, 21.53, minus 76.4. The 11th of March, U.S. freighter Caribsy sunk by U-158 at 34.67 degrees north 76.16 degrees west, 34. 67, minus 76.16. The 12th of March, U.S. tanker John D. Gill sunk by U-158 at 35.92 degrees north 77.65 degrees west, 35.92, minus 77.65, four crewmen perished. 
The 12th of March, U.S. freighter Olga sunk by U-126 at 23.65 degrees north, 77.0 degrees west, 23.65 minus 77.0. The 12th of March, U.S. freighter Kolobi damaged by U-126 at 22.23 degrees north, 77.58 degrees west, 22.23 minus 77.58. The 13th of March, U.S. schooner Albert F. Paul sunk by U-332 at 26.0 degrees north, 72.0 degrees west, 26.0 minus 72.0. No survivors. 13 13th of March, Chilean freighter Tolton sunk by U-404 at 40.16 degrees north, 73.84 degrees west, 40.16 minus 73.84. 15 of 16 crewmen perished. The 14th of March, U.S. collier Lemuel Burroughs sunk by U-404 at 39.20 degrees north, 74.27 degrees west, 39.20 minus 74.27. 15 15th of March, U.S. tanker Aereo sunk by U-158 at 34.33 degrees north, 76.65 degrees west, 34.33 minus 76.65. Seven of 36 crewmen perished. The 15th of March, U.S. tanker Olean sunk by U-158 at 34.40 degrees north, 76.48 degrees west, 34.40 minus 76.48. 16 16th of March, U.S. tanker Australia sunk by U-332 at 35.12 degrees north, 75.37 degrees west, 35.12 minus 75.37. The 16th of March, British tanker San Demetrio sunk by U-404 at 37.05 degrees north, 73.84 degrees west, 37.05 minus 73.84. 17 17th of March, U.S. tanker Acme damaged by U-124 at 35.1 degrees north, 76.67 degrees west, 35.1 minus 76.67. The 17th of March, Greek freighter Cassandra Ludi sunk by U-124 four mile off Diamond Shoals gas buoy. The 17th of March, Honduran freighter Seba sunk by U-124 at 35.72 degrees north, 73.82 degrees west, 35.72 minus 73.82. The 18th of March, U.S. tanker E.M. Clark sunk by U-124 at 34.84 degrees north, 75.58 degrees west, 34.84 minus 75.58. The 18th of March, U.S. tanker Papoose sunk by U-124 at 34.28 degrees north, 76.65 degrees west, 34.28 minus 76.65. The 18th of March, U.S. tanker W.E. Hutton sunk by U-332 at 34.08 degrees north, 76.67 degrees west, 34.08 minus 76.67. 13 of 36 crewmen perished. The 19th of March, U.S. freighter Liberator sunk by U-332 at 35.08 degrees north, 75.50 degrees west, 35.08 minus 75.50. Five crewmen perished. The 20th of March, U.S. tanker Okmar sunk by U-71 at 36.35 degrees north, 68.84 degrees west, 36.35 minus 68.84. Six of 36 crewmen perished. The 21st of March, U.S. tanker SO Nashville sunk by U-124 at 33.58 degrees north, 77.37 degrees west, 33.58 minus 77.37. The 21st of March, U.S. tanker Atlantic Sun damaged by U-124. The 22nd of March, U.S. tanker NAO sunk by U-124 at 33.98 degrees north, 76.67 degrees west, 33.98 minus 76.67. 24 of 39 crewmen perished. The 25th of March, Dutch tanker Okanya sunk by U-552 at 42.6 degrees north 64.42 degrees west, 42.6, minus 64.42. 
The 26th of March, U.S. Q ship USS Atik sunk by U-123 at 36.0 degrees north, 70.0 degrees west, 36.0 minus 70.0. All 139 crewmen perished. The 26th of March, U.S. tanker Dixie Arrow sunk by U-71 at 34.98 degrees north, 75.55 degrees west, 34.98 minus 75.55. 11 of 33 crewmen perished. The 26th of March, Panamanian tanker Equipoise sunk by U-160 at 36.6 degrees north, 74.75 degrees west, 36.6 minus 74.75. The 29th of March, U.S. steamship City of New York sunk by U-160 at 35.27 degrees north, 74.42 degrees west, 35.27 minus 74.42. 24 of 157 crewmen perished. The 31st of March, U.S. tug Menominee and barges Allegheny and Barnegat sunk by U-754 at 37.57 degrees north, 75.42 degrees west, 37.57 minus 75.42. The 31st of March, U.S. tanker Tiger sunk by U-754, one of 43 crewmen perishes. 3 of April, U.S. freighter Otho sunk by U-754 at 36.42 degrees north 71.95 degrees west, 36.42, minus 71.95, 31 of 53 crewmen perished. 4 April, U.S. tanker Byron D. Benson sunk by U-552 at 36.13 degrees north 75.53 degrees west, 36.13, minus 75.53 9 of 37 crewmen perished. 6 April, U.S. tanker Bidwell damaged by U-160 34.42 degrees north 75.95 degrees west, 34.42, minus 75.95 one of 33 crewmen perishes. 7 April, Norwegian freighter Lansing sunk by U-552 off Cape Hatteras, 7 April, British tanker British Splendor sunk by U-552 off Cape Hatteras, 8 8th of April, U.S. tanker Oklahoma damaged by U-123 at 31.3 degrees north 80.98 degrees west, 31.3, minus 80.98 19 of 37 crewmen perished. The 8th of April, U.S. tanker Esso Baton Rouge damaged by U-123 at 31.22 degrees north 80.08 degrees west, 31.22, minus 80.08 3 of 39 crewmen perished. The 9th of April, U.S. freighter Esparta sunk by U-123 30.77 degrees north 81.18 degrees west, 30.77, minus 81.18 one of 40 crewmen perishes. The 9th of April, U.S. freighter Malchase sunk by U-160 at 34.47 degrees north 75.93 degrees west, 34.47, minus 75.93 one of 29 crewmen perished. The 9th of April, U.S. tanker Atlas sunk by U-552 at 34.45 degrees north 76.27 degrees west, 34.45, minus 76.27 2 of 34 crewmen perished. The 9th of April, tanker Tamaulipas sunk by U-552 at 34.42 degrees north 76.0 degrees west, 34.42, minus 76. 0, 2 of 37 crewmen perished. The 10th of April, U.S. tanker Gulf America sunk by U-123 at 30.23 degrees north 81.3 degrees west, 30.23, minus 81.3, 19 of 48 crewmen perished. The 11th of April, U.S. tanker Harry F. Sinclair Jr. damaged by U-203 at 34.42 degrees north 76.5 degrees west, 34.42, minus 76.5 10 of 36 crewmen perished. The 11th of April, British steamship Ulysses sunk by U-160 at 34.38 degrees north 75.58 degrees west, 34.38, minus 75.58. 
The 12th of April, Panamanian tanker Stanback Melbourne sunk by U-203 at 33.88 degrees north, 77.48 degrees west, 33.88 minus 77.48. The 12th of April, U.S. freighter Leslie sunk by U-123 at 28.62 degrees north, 80.42 degrees west, 28.62 minus 80.42. Three of 32 crewmen perished. The 14th of April, British freighter Empire Thrush sunk by U-203 at 35.2 degrees north, 75.23 degrees west, 35.2 minus 75.23. 14 April, U.S. freighter Margaret sunk by U-571 at 35.2 degrees north 75.23 degrees west, 35.2, minus 75.23 all 29 crewmen perished. 15 April, U.S. freighter Robin Hood sunk by U-575 at 38.65 degrees north 66.63 degrees west, 38.65, minus 66.63 14 of 38 crewmen perished. 16 April, U.S. freighter Alcoa Guide sunk by U-123 at 35.57 degrees north 70.13 degrees west, 35.57, minus 70.13 6 of 34 crewmen perished. 17 April, Argentine tanker Victoria damaged by U-201 at 36.68 degrees north 68.8 degrees west, 36.68, minus 68.8 18 April, U.S. tanker Axtel J. Biles damaged by U-136 at 35.53 degrees north 75.32 degrees west, 35.53, minus 75.32. 19 April, U.S. freighter Steelmaker sunk by U-136 at 33.08 degrees north 70.6 degrees west, 33.08, minus 70.6 one of 45 crewmen perished. 20 20th of April, U.S. freighter West Imboden sunk by U-752 at 41.23 degrees north, 65.9 degrees west, 41.23, minus 65.9. 21 April, U.S. freighter Pipestone County sunk by U-576 at 37.58 degrees north 66.33 degrees west, 37.58, minus 66.33. 21 April, U.S. freighter San Jacinto sunk by U-201 at 31.16 degrees north 70.75 degrees west, 31.16, minus 70.75 14 of 183 crewmen perished. 29 April, U.S. tanker Mobile Oil sunk by U-108 at 26.16 degrees north 66.25 degrees west, 26.16, minus 66.25. 29 April, U.S. tanker Federal sunk by U-507 at 21.22 degrees north 76.08 degrees west, 21.22, minus 76.08 5 of 33 crewmen perished. 2 May, U.S. armed yacht Sathera sunk by U-402 off North Carolina 66 of 68 crewmen perished. 4 May, U.S. tanker Norlando sunk by U-507 at 24.95 degrees north 84.0 degrees west, 24.95, minus 84.0 5 of 28 crewmen perished. 4 May, U.S. tanker Munger T-Ball sunk by U-507 at 25.28 degrees north 83.95 degrees west, 25.28, minus 83.95 30 of 34 crewmen perished. 4 May, U.S. tanker Joseph M. Cudahy sunk by U-507 at 25.95 degrees north 83.95 degrees west, 25.95, minus 83.95, 27 of 37 crewmen perished. 4 May, U.S. freighter Delisle damaged by U-564 at 27.03 degrees north 80.05 degrees west, 27.03, minus 80.05, 2 of 36 crewmen perished. 5 May, U.S. freighter Afoundria sunk by U-108 at 20.0 degrees north 73.5 degrees west, 20.0, minus 73.5, 
The 5th of May, U.S. tanker Java Arrow damaged by U-333 at 27.5 degrees north, 80.13 degrees west, 27.5 minus 80.13. Two of 47 crewmen perished. 6 May, U.S. tanker Halsey sunk by U-333 at 27.23 degrees north 80.05 degrees west, 27.23, minus 80.05, 5 of 28 crewmen perished. 6 May, U.S. freighter Alcoa Puritan sunk by U-507 at 28.67 degrees north 88.37 degrees west, 28.67, minus 88.37. 8 8th of May, U.S. freighter Ohioan sunk by U-564 at 26.52 degrees north, 79.97 degrees west, 26.52 minus 79.97, 15 of 37 crewmen perished. The 10th of May, U.S. tanker Aurora damaged by U-506 at 28.58 degrees north, 90.0 degrees west, 28.58 minus 90.0, one of 50 crewmen perished. 12 12th of May, U.S. tanker Virginia sunk by U-507 at 28.88 degrees north, 89.48 degrees west, 28.88 minus 89.48, 27 of 41 crewmen perished. The 13th of May, U.S. tanker Gulf Prince damaged by U-507 at 28.53 degrees north, 91.0 degrees west, 28.53 minus 91.0. 13 13th of May, U.S. tanker Gulf Pen sunk by U-506 at 28.48 degrees north, 89.2 degrees west, 28.48 minus 89.2, 13 of 38 crewmen perished. The 13th of May, U.S. freighter David McElvey sunk by U-506 at 28.5 degrees north, 89.92 degrees west, 28.5 minus 89.92, 17 of 36 crewmen perished. 15 15th of May, U.S. freighter Nicarau sunk by U-751 at 25.33 degrees north, 74.32 degrees west, 25.33 minus 74.32, 8 of 39 crewmen perished. The 16th of May, U.S. tanker Sun damaged by U-506 at 28.68 degrees north, 90.32 degrees west, 28.68 minus 90.32. 16 16th of May, U.S. tanker William C. McTarnahan damaged by U-506 at 28.87 degrees north, 90.33 degrees west, 28.87 minus 90.33, 18 of 38 crewmen perished. The 16th of May, U.S. tanker Gulfoil sunk by U-506 at 28.68 degrees north, 90.32 degrees west, 28.68 minus 90.32, 21 of 40 crewmen perished. The 19th of May, U.S. Freighter Heredia sunk by U-506 at 27.53 degrees north, 91.0 degrees west, 27.53 minus 91.0, 36 of 62 crewmen perished. The 19th of May, U.S. freighter Ogant sunk by U-103 at 23.5 degrees north, 86.62 degrees west, 23.5 minus 86.62, 19 of 41 crewmen perished. The 20th of May, U.S. tanker Halo sunk by U-506 at 28.7 degrees north 90.13 degrees west, 28.7, minus 90.13, 21 of 42 crewmen perished. The 20th of May, U.S. freighter George Calvert sunk by U-752 at 22.92 degrees north 84.43 degrees west, 22.92, minus 84.43, 3 of 61 crewmen perished. The 21st of May, U.S. freighter Plow City sunk by U-588 at 39.13 degrees north 69.95 degrees west, 39.13, minus 69.95, one of 30 crewmen perished. The 26th of May, U.S. tanker Carabola sunk by U-106 at 26.15 degrees north 89.35 degrees west, 26.15, minus 89.35, 22 of 40 crewmen perished. 
The 26th of May, U.S. freighter Atenas damaged by U-106 at 25.84 degrees north, 89.08 degrees west, 25.84 minus 89.08. The 30th of May, U.S. freighter Alcoa shipper sunk by U-404 at 37.82 degrees north, 65.25 degrees west, 37.82 minus 65.25. Seven of 32 crewmen perished. The 1st of June, U.S. freighter West Notice sunk by U-404 at 34.16 degrees north, 68.33 degrees west, 34.16 minus 68.33. Four of 40 crewmen perished. The 1st of June, U.S. freighter Hampton Roads sunk by U-106 at 23.0 degrees north, 85.7 degrees west, 23.0 minus 85.7. Five of 28 crewmen perished. 3 June, U.S. freighter M.F. Elliott sunk by U-502 off the Florida Keys 13 of 45 crewmen perished. 10 June, U.S. tanker Hagen sunk by U-157 at 22.0 degrees north 77.5 degrees west, 22.0, minus 77.5 6 of 44 crewmen perished. 12 12th of June, U.S. tanker Cities Service Toledo sunk by U-158 at 29.03 degrees north, 91.98 degrees west, 29.03 minus 91. 98. 15 of 45 crewmen perished. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Allied countermeasures. The decision to implement convoys and blackout coastal towns to make ships more difficult to see came slowly. The situation began to change on 1 April when Andrews restricted ships to traveling only during daylight hours between protected anchorages. On 14 May 1942 the first coastal convoy sailed from Hampton Roads for Key West, and convoys later extended northward to Boston, where they connected with the BX convoys to Halifax initiated by the Royal Canadian Navy in March. Full convoys produced an immediate reduction of Allied shipping losses off the East Coast as Donitz withdrew the U-boats to seek easier pickings elsewhere. The convoy system was later extended to the Gulf of Mexico with similar dramatic effects, thus proving that King and Andrews' initial rejection of the convoy system was wrong. In March, 24 Royal Navy anti-submarine trawlers and 10 corvettes were transferred from the UK for the defence of the US East Coast. The British also transferred 53 Squadron, RAF Coastal Command to Quonset Point, Rhode Island to shield New York Harbor during July 1942. This squadron moved to Trinidad in August, with a U.S. squadron, to protect the critical sea lanes from the Venezuelan oil fields back to Norfolk, Virginia until the end of 1942. Royal Navy and Royal Canadian Navy ships took over escort duties in the Caribbean and on the Aruba New York tanker run. Fast CU convoys were organized to maintain petroleum fuel stockpiles in the British Isles. The Kriegsmarine, while enormously effective during this period, did not go without losses. Sinkings of German U boats at the hands of Allied forces during this time included U 85, sunk on 14 April by the destroyer USS Roper in position 35.917 degrees north, 75.217 degrees west, 35.917, minus 75.217 off Cape Hatteras, the first sinking in U.S. waters. U-352, sunk on 9 May by the cutter USCGC Icarus in position 34.2 degrees north 76.583 degrees west, 34.2, minus 76.583 off Cape Hatteras U-157, sunk on 13 June by the cutter USCGC Thetis in position 24.217 degrees north 82.05 degrees west, 24.217, minus 82.05 off Havana, Cuba U-158, sunk on 30 June by a Mariner aircraft USNVP-74 in position 32.833 degrees north 67.467 degrees west, 32.833, minus 67.467 west of Bermuda 
U-215, sunk on 3 July by the armed ASW trawler HMS La Tiger in position 41.48 degrees north 66.38 degrees west, 41.48, minus 66.38 by depth charges U-701, sunk on 7 July by a Lockheed Hudson aircraft in position 34.833 degrees north 74.917 degrees west, 34.833, minus 74.917 off Cape Hatteras U-153, sunk on 13 July by the destroyer USS Lansdowne in position 9.933 degrees north 81.483 degrees west, 9.933, minus 81.483 off Cologne, Panama U-576, sunk on 15 July by 2 Vought OS-2 U Kingfisher aircraft and ramming by the U.S. motor vessel Unicoi in position 34.85 degrees north 75.367 degrees west, 34.85, minus 75.367 off Cape Hatteras U-166, sunk on 30 July by the U.S. Navy patrol craft, PC-566, in position 28.517 degrees north 90.75 degrees west, 28.517, minus 90.75 in the Gulf of Mexico, the only U-boat sunk in the Gulf of Mexico during World War II. U-165 sunk on 27 September 1942 by a Vickers Wellington of 311, Q Squadron, RAF with a Czech aircrew. U-132 sunk on 5 November 1942 by aircraft of No. 120 Squadron RAF. U-517 sunk 17 November 1942 by ferry albacores of 817 Naval Air Squadron from the aircraft carrier HMS Victorious. U-553 lost at sea 28 January 1943 U-69 active in the East Coast operations, rammed and sunk on 17 February 1943 by HMS FAME U-106 active in the East Coast operations, sunk 2 August 1943, by aircraft attack by NO. 461 Squadron RAAF flown by Flight Lieutenant A.F. Clark See also First happy time